know that everything you've seen from me up to this point has been great views, awesome hikes, cool off-roading, and all of that good stuff. But today, I want to show you a real day in the life of full-time travel living in this tiny trailer. As soon as I woke up this morning, the first thing that I did was I stripped all of the sheets off of my bed because today is a laundry day. I then took all of my dirty clothes and my sheets and I drove two miles off road and 20 miles on road into the town of Lake Havasu. Once I arrived in Lake Havasu, I stopped at the laundromat where I did all of my laundry. And once I finished up folding the laundry, I headed in a little bit further into town to a Starbucks, not to eat breakfast or get a coffee or anything like that, but actually to upload a YouTube video. And since Starbucks is completely closed for dine-in all across the country, I had to actually sit outside of Starbucks in order to upload my video. After that, it was time for lunch. So I headed to El Pollo Loco, which is a fast food restaurant that's actually relatively healthy here in Lake Havasu. So I stopped there and I sat down to edit this footage. I'm editing the video you're watching right now. And now you're watching me in real time and it's time for us to get a workout in. done with my ride and now it's time to take a shower. Okay and now that we are all cleaned up and showered it's time to head back to the campsite and finish up filming this video. Okay, so if you watched Monday's video, you know that I started off that video fully intending on having a conversation all about the camera gear that I'm bringing along with me on this trip across the country. And right when we started talking all about camera gear, I made the realization that my windshield had cracked on my truck. And it stressed me out enough that I was like, all right, I have to stop filming this segment of the video and I just, I just need to figure this out right now. So it's the next day, actually, it's two days later, I have since figured that out. That video has been uploaded and I'm now ready <laughs> to talk about camera gear. So the first thing that we gotta talk about today is my main photography camera. I talked about this a little bit in the last video, but my main photography camera is this right here, the Leica Q2. I absolutely love this camera. So it has a 47 megapixel sensor, a fixed 28 millimeter lens, um, and it is a essentially a compact point and shoot camera. However, it has absolutely amazing image quality. The, my only gripe with it is that it doesn't have interchangeable lenses, but the size or the resolution of the sensor, in my opinion, makes up for that. Because it's a 47 megapixel sensor, I'm able to crop from 28 millimeters into 35 millimeters and still maintain like 30 megapixels of resolution. And I can actually crop into 50 millimeters and still maintain 20 megapixels of resolution. So 28 millimeters traditionally would be too wide of a lens for me to have as like an only lens, but because of the high resolution of this camera, I can use it as a 28 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, or a 50 millimeter if I, if I really wanna crop in on the image. I absolutely love this camera, and it's what I've taken probably 70 or 80% of my images on this trip with. The second camera that I use is what's filming me right now, the Canon EOS R. And I know that a whole bunch of cameras from Canon have been released since the EOS R was released, and this is not the newest, most updated camera on the market, but it still gets the job done for me. I love this camera, 30 megapixels resolution. It takes awesome 1080p video and 4K video as well if you're willing to deal with the crop. Um, awesome camera, I have three lenses for it, and the one that I'm filming with right now is the 15 to 35 millimeter f2.8. 
So any image that this is not wide enough to take, I use this camera and this lens to take those images. And I also obviously film all of my videos on this camera. In addition to the 15 to 35 millimeter lens, I also have a 24 to 105 lens, which I use for anything that I need to zoom in a little bit more on. I use this oftentimes for video if I want something a little bit tighter than the 15 to 35. And I also have a 135 millimeter F2 lens. And this is a EF lens, so I have to use the EF to RF adapter, which doesn't bother me at all. I, I, I don't mind it. Um, but I use this for a lot of the photos I take of like my truck and then anything that's more telephoto, I'll use this for. And you'll notice that on the front of both of these lenses, I have a Polar Pro filter adapter. And so this adapts whatever filter thread this is up to an 82 millimeter filter thread because I have a set of Polar Pro filters that I use for this lens, this lens, and the one that's filming me right now. I have a variable ND, a circular polarizer, a 10-stop ND filter, and I think a three-stop ND filter for photos. Um, and so I can use all of those filters, the same filters for all three of these lenses because of these step-up rings. The next thing that I have is this Polaroid. And I don't use this for anything except to take pictures at like the top of a hike or something like that. And then I mail them to my girlfriend because she is 3000 miles away and I miss her. Also, the next thing I have in my bag is the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Absolutely love this thing. I think it's like one or two generations old, but this one still really gets the job done for me. It has amazing stabilization and the only mount that I've really been using for it is this suction cup mount. I'm able to stick it to basically any part of my truck and I just get time lapses of me going from one place to another or off-roading or different things like that. And it works really, really well. I do have a chest mount and a head mount and a wrist mount and a selfie stick and all sorts of mounts for this, but I have not used any of those since leaving home. I've literally just used the suction cup mount. I also have this Mavic Air 2 drone. I bought this just before leaving because I did some research and learned that it has new active track capabilities, it's called, which is basically its ability to track an object and keep it in the center of the frame. So when you see those driving shots of me driving my truck and the drones following me, I'm not actually even piloting it. I basically just set it up on one of its active track modes and I let it do its thing. I mean, every once in a while, I'll be fiddling with the joystick a little bit if I'm not on a main road and I'm, I'm away from other people, but it does an amazing job of tracking me. 12 megapixel sensor, shoots great 4K video. It takes photos when I need to take a photo from the sky, but I'm 99% of the time just taking a photo with a camera. I don't really do photos with the drone. Um, I'll probably be at some place at some point where the shot I wanna take can only be taken from the sky, so I'll probably use it. And I have it for that when I need it. But for now, this is purely a video tool and I love it. The last camera that I use that I think I'm gonna stop using as much as I've been using it is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. This thing is awesome. It has the wide angle lens. I think it's like a 13 millimeter equivalent. It's got the regular lens, which is like a 26 millimeter. And then the telephoto lens, which is like a 50 millimeter. It takes really good 4K video if you have good lighting if you have enough light present. It really struggles in low light. But for the shots of me like walking into the gym and um, like climbing up something, like scaling up the side of a mountain when I don't feel like lugging my big camera with me, this thing works amazingly well. You do have to work within its constraints. I mean, if there's wind blowing, the wind noise on it is terrible. And if it's too dark out, it's not gonna look good. But if you work within the constraints of the iPhone, it looks really, really nice, and it's a great supplemental camera to my EOS R. Overall, if I had to pick something that was my absolute favorite from all of this gear that I just showed you, it would definitely be the Leica Q2. This thing is, it's just such a great camera. I love Leicas, I'm obsessed with them. I'm definitely a Leica fanboy. I used to have a Leica Q, the original one, and then I had a Leica MD, which I sold recently, and I picked up this because 
of the higher resolution, my ability to crop a little bit, and because honestly it just looked really exciting and I thought it would be a great camera to travel with. Let me know if you have any questions about this or if you want me to make a video just talking about this camera. Um, I'd be happy to do that, but yeah, this thing rocks. A big part of the reason why I made this video today and pulled all of my camera gear out is because the batteries on just about everything are dead right now and I need to charge them. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here and I am gonna charge the batteries on all of these because tomorrow I'm heading to California. I'm finishing my coast to coast, New York to California mission and I'm gonna be filming a couple videos in California over the next couple of days. Super excited but I need to make sure that all of my stuff is charged so I can actually film those videos. Thank you everybody for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions about any of this stuff. If you want a more detailed video about any of these things, I'm happy to do that. Let me know. But thank you as always for watching. Definitely give the video a thumbs up if you haven't already. And hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content from me. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.